Hello everyone. I am Dr. Deepika Malik. Today's topic of discussion is industrial production of lysine. Lysine is present at a low concentration in most of the plant proteins. Being an essential amino acid, supplementation of plant foods with lysine increases their nutritional quality. L lysine is predominantly produced by Cornobacterium glutamicum and to some extent by Brevibacterium flavum or Brevibacterium lactofermentum. Lysine was first isolated by the German biological chemist Ferdinand Henrik Edmund Dreschel in 1889 from the protein casein in milk. He named it lysine. Now let us see the definition of lysine. Lysine is an amino acid that is a building block of protein. L lysine is an essential amino acid. Lysine is one of the nine essential amino acids in humans. Essential amino acids are amino acids that cannot be made by the body, so they must be supplied from your diet. Lysine is a basic charged aliphatic amino acid. It acts as a charged molecule at physiological pH, that is the pH that normally prevails in the human body. Food sources of lysine are high protein foods such as eggs, meats, etc. Now let us see some properties of lysine. It has a molecular formula of C6H14N2O2. It has a molecular weight of 146.19 grams per mole. It appears colorless to white. It has a pleasant caramel-like odor. It is sparingly soluble in water. Now coming to the uses of lysine, L lysine is used in many fields. L lysine is an essential amino acid required for the human nutrition. It is used as supplementary for cereal proteins. Protein quality of certain foods like wheat based foods is improved by addition of L lysine which results in the improved growth and tissue synthesis. It is used as a nutraceutical. Nutraceuticals are functional foods which have physiological benefits. The next slide shows the biosynthesis pathway of L lysine which is somewhat complex. The raw materials provided in the fermenter breaks down into fermentable sugar that is glucose. As the glucose gets oxidized by glycolysis, phosphorinol pyruvate and pyruvate are formed. Both these metabolites can be converted to oxaloacetate, a key component of citric acid cycle. On transamination, oxaloacetate forms aspartate or aspartic acid. After this, the enzyme aspartase kinase converts this aspartate to aspartyl phosphate which later forms aspartate semi-aldehyde as you can see in the diagram shown towards the right side. This aspartate semi-aldehyde so formed has two fates. First fate is the formation or biosynthesis of lysine and second is formation of three amino acids that is methionine, threonine and isoleucine. When homoserine dehydrogenase acts on aspartate semi-aldehyde, it is diverted for the synthesis of the three amino acids mentioned above. Whereas the enzyme dihydrodipicolinate synthase converts aspartate semi-aldehyde and pyruvate to piperidine 2 6 dicarboxylate There are two distinct enzymes that is succinyl variant which catalyzes a four step reaction and dehydrogenase variant which catalyzes a single step reaction that can convert piperidine 2 6 dicarboxylate to DL diminopimylate which forms later L lysine now let us discuss the regulation steps involved in biosynthesis of L lysine. L lysine is the form of lysine which is produced during the fermentation process which can be utilized by the body. Purpose of studying this regulation process is to improve the microbial strains employed for the fermentation process for better yield of lysine in the fermenter. For this, let us discuss the steps regulated by the following three enzymes. First is aspartate kinase. This enzyme is controlled by feedback inhibition of the end products. By genetic manipulations, it has been possible to create mutants with an altered aspartate kinase that are insensitive to feedback regulation by L lysine. Second enzyme is dihydrodipicolinate synthase. Overexpression of dihydrodipicolinate synthase has been shown to increase the production of L lysine. That is, a strain is produced with a decreased homoserine dehydrogenase activity so that diversion for the synthesis of methionine, threonine and isoleucine is minimized. Third enzyme is succinyl and dehydrogenase variants. These two variants are involved in the conversion of piperidine 2,6-dicarboxylate to DL-diaminopimylate. 
At the start of the fermentation, dehydrogenase variant predominantly acts and later succinyl variant comes into picture for the biosynthesis of L-lysine. Now, after the lysine has been produced by the microbial cells, next step is their release into the fermentation medium. For the export or release of L-lysine from the cells into the surrounding medium occurs through a lysine export carrier protein. It is a transmembrane protein that participates in lysine transport. The exporter system is very efficient active process to export large quantities of intracellular lysine into the surrounding environment. Now the first step in the fermentation process is the preparation of medium. The medium should contain the following components. First is the carbon source. The most commonly used carbon source for lysine manufacture is molasses, cane or sugar beet, starch hydrolysates or sucrose. The other sources like acetate, ethanol or alkanes are used to a lesser extent. Inorganic salts, trace elements and growth factors. Inorganic salts of various metals like magnesium, example magnesium sulfate, calcium, potassium, sodium, iron, example iron sulfate, manganese and zinc or traces of other metals can be used. Protein hydrolysates are added to supply certain amino acids like L-methionine, L-homocerine and L-threonine. The protein hydrolysates also supply growth factors such as biotin. Another important component is the nitrogen source. Inorganic compounds such as gaseous and aqueous ammonia, ammonium salts of inorganic or organic acids such as ammonium sulfate, ammonium nitrate, ammonium phosphate, ammonium chloride, ammonium acetate and ammonium carbonate can be used. Alternatively, natural nitrogen containing organic materials such as soybean hydrolysate, soy protein hydrochloride hydrolysate, soybean meal, soybean cake hydrolysate, corn steep liquor, casein hydrolysate, yeast extract, meat extract, malt extract, urea, peptones and amino acids may also be utilized as nitrogen sources in the fermentation medium. Now after the media is ready, suitable and high yielding mutant strain of Cornobacterium glutamicum is used for the stock culture for the production of inoculum. Mutants of Cornobacterium and related organisms enable the inexpensive production of amino acids by direct fermentation of cheap carbon sources, example molasses, acetic acid and ethanol. Selected mutant strains with improved productivity characteristics are used today in industry for the production of L-lysine, which are obtained by various methods including classical mutagenesis, that is use of irradiations like UV and X-ray, and chemical mutagen treatment, plasma fusion, genetic engineering, and any other techniques commonly used for mutation of microorganisms. Three main approaches are mainly available for the fermentation process. First, in batch fermentation, organisms grow until one or more of essential nutrients is exhausted or until fermentation conditions become unfavorable, example product inhibition, oxygen limitation, pH decrease in shake flask, and uncontrolled fermentations, etc. Secondly, in fed batch fermentations, one or more nutrients are continuously or intermittently supplied to the culture medium either from the beginning of fermentation or after the culture has reached a certain age or when nutrient or nutrients are exhausted. The microorganism grows at a growth rate dictated by the rate or timing of nutrient feed. Third approach that is the continuous fermentation uses continuous feeding of a complete medium while culture fluid is continuously or semi-continuously withdrawn in such a way that the working fermenter volume remains constant. Next, the fermentation is carried out at 28 degrees Celsius and is allowed up to 60 hours. L-lysine fermentation is an aerobic process demanding large amounts of oxygen. The pH is a very important factor strongly influencing microbial fermentations. Basic compounds such as sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, ammonium hydroxide, calcium carbonate, urea, ammonia and gases ammonia or inorganic acid compounds such as phosphoric or sulfuric acid and organic acids are utilized for controlling pH in lysine cultures at a pH ranging from 5 to 9. Foam production in the aerated culture can be controlled by adding suitable anti-foam agent. Now after the production of lysine, next step is the product recovery. For the cell separation, the fraction of L-lysine fermentation broth is obtained by any suitable separating method such as ultrafiltration or centrifugation. 
After cell separation, the lysine present in the broth will be purified by ion exchange chromatography. The lysine will bind to the negatively charged column and release from the column when a buffer changes the pH of the column. This change in pH basically changes the charge on lysine to a neutral charge. Further, the lysine collected from the column is concentrated by heating. The crystals produced are dried with a hot air in a closed system. Then, the crystal is packed in the packaging and ready to be sold. Now let us have a quick review on the industrial production of lysine. First step includes the preparation of raw materials that includes carbon source, nitrogen source, inorganic salts, trace elements and growth factors. After this, suitable microorganism, mainly Cornobacterium glutamicum, is added to the fermenter. In next step, fermentation is carried out by any of the three approaches that is batch fermentation, fed batch fermentation or continuous fermentation. After the fermentation is complete, the cells are separated from the fermentation broth by filtration or centrifugation. After this, the fermentation broth is subjected to purification by ion exchange chromatography where the lysine gets separated from the other components of the broth. The liquid obtained from the column is further subjected to evaporation and crystallization which are further packaged to be sold. With this we wind up the topic of industrial production of lysine. For any doubts and queries you can contact me through the given email id. Thank you.